My new project is the Walters Golden Valley Freight House. Now you can see from its dimensions here, it's eight and three eighths long, three and three eighths deep. So it's a pretty small structure and it should fit in a lot of places. Well, there's not a whole lot to the kit. So, I think it should go together pretty quickly. And for the instructions, just a single sheet printed on both sides. The first steps are to build the walls, and it's interesting that there are inner and outer walls. I have the four walls glued together, and I am using Tamiya Extra Thin Cement, which is perfect for this. And I have squares in place. Make sure the building is nice and square. Three of the corners on the building turned out beautifully. There's absolutely no seam here, here, but here I have a gap. I'm going to have to fill that gap. And what I'll do is I'll take some of this 10,000 styrene and the modeling cement. And I'll glue this styrene down into that gap. All right, so I've applied the 10,000s plastic and inserted that into the gap in the corner. Now, after this modeling cement is on this plastic for a time, it gets soft. Using that cement actually welds these parts together. I'm going to go ahead and trim off this excess. All right, I got a 240 grit sanding stick. So I'm just going to go ahead and sand this corner. I have the base color paint on the Golden Valley Freight House. Now I've taken some of these individual parts. I'm putting uh, the base color of brown on these. And I'll also paint this walkway brown. I have the initial paint on the Golden Valley Freight House. I've mixed up a lighter shade of brown for this deck. And I'm going to Dry brush the deck. I'll lighten the deck up a little bit and the darker brown will highlight the grooves in the wood and I'll just keep going over it until I have it as light as I think looks good. All right, so I've mixed up some gray. And I used some dark brown, some black, and some white. And I have a little piece of foam on my tweezers here. Now I want to get rid of want to get rid of most of this paint. So I'm going to put this gray down. Mostly in the high traffic areas. But I'll also fix some of these mistakes. I'm 
you know, wood, once it's been exposed to the elements and all the paint's worn off, as it ages, it turns gray. So that's pretty much what I'm trying to suggest. A number of years since it's been repainted and the wood has turned gray. sponge painted the deck with uh, about four different colors. And you can see I have a dark path here and here. Now this would line up with the freight station doors. And I'm thinking that a rail car would park here so this traffic would come straight in and straight out. So I have a little bit of grime there. And then I have the gray wear pattern for foot traffic. And I have a little bit of a traffic pattern on the stairs. So I think I'm in good shape for now. Once I get it clear coated, I can add some washes to enhance it a bit more. I did some sponge chipping on the freight house doors here and here. This is so typical wear areas. And I did a little bit on the entry door. So now what I'm going to do is take a little bit of pure white and I'm going to dry brush the doors and windows. All right, so I got almost all of the paint out of the brush. And now I'm just going to dry brush the edges. And these doors will also get a wash after the clear coat. All right, so you can compare those two doors to these doors. And you can see the details are picked out a little bit better with these dry brush doors. So I'll dry brush the windows and doors remaining. I had the dry brushing done on the doors and windows for the small freight house. Well, I have the Golden Valley Freight House just about painted. And now, the last part of the construction will be to put these roof supports on. Other than adding the glass for the windows, the Golden Valley Freight House is built. Now, I added a little styrene strip here for the LED. I'll mount a single LED here and I'll probably put the resistor right here and then run the leads out the back. I have the roof supports in place for the freight house. So all that's done. And the painting's done here. So I'm going to let this paint dry for a day, and then I'll spray it with the clear coat. I am ready to spray the clear coat on the Golden Valley Freight House using MIG Matte Lucky Varnish. This is an acrylic varnish. I have a Badger Patriot 105 airbrush that I'm using with a 0.3 millimeter needle. It's got the little blue ball on the end. This is a really good general purpose airbrush. I also use it for my military modeling. And this matte varnish, you just use it straight out of the bottle. Alright, I 
it's really thin, so don't want to get it on too heavy. Always make a couple, couple of passes. I want to give it a wet coat, but I don't want any runs. I wanted to give the Golden Valley Freight House a name since it didn't have decals. I have a piece of styrene here, so what I'll do is I'll cut this out and then glue the paper to the styrene. And this is just regular printer paper. I have the sign for the Golden Valley Freight House done. So I'll mount this on the building probably after I get it weathered. I have all the windows now glued in with canopy glue. So I'll let that sit for probably an hour or so to let that thicken up. Well, it's time to put the pin wash on the Golden Valley Freight House. Now this dark brown oil paint is too dark. And this dust oil paint is too light. So I'm going to mix these two to get a shade that will accentuate the wood siding but not make it too stark. So I'll try that. That's about a 50-50 mix. So I'm going to add some thinner. This is looking like it's going to be a little problematic. So before I get too long, too far along, let's see how this cleans up. This pin wash isn't as going as well as I would like. I don't know if using the uh, matte clear is keeping the keeping the pin wash from flowing out but it is not flowing out so it's going to take a little bit of extra work have the pin wash done on the Golden Valley Freight House Doesn't look too bad. So it looks like it's been in the weather for a few years since its last coat of paint. And you can see by the doors, uh, the paint is worn off the doors from frequent open and close. So I think the pin wash matches the doors as far as aging is concerned. To streak the roof from the top down, I'm going to use MIG Oil Brusher Starship Filth. Then I'm going to mix it with a little bit of dust. And these are oil paints, and they're very convenient. So I'm going to mix up a little bit streak the top of the roof. I have about a 50-50 mix of the two color oil paints. So I'll just blend those together. And I'm going to apply those to the roof full strength. And the beauty of oil paint is 
is the amount of working time. And I don't worry too much about having heavier or thinner amounts of paint in areas. It'll just cause the opacity of the streak to be less or more. Now I'm going to take some thinner. Use this brush and dip it in thinner and get it damp. You know, I'm going to draw down on this oil paint and I want to draw this down as straight as I can and I want to draw it all the way to the end. This end here, I'm going to touch that up a little bit more. And I'm going to go up top and kind of balance out the paint here so I don't have any real heavy clumps of paint. And you always want to pull down in the direction of gravity. All right, so I got that side done. Now, since I have this mixture of paint, I'm going to go over to the other side of the roof and streak it from the top down. All right, so we got some pretty good looking streaks here. So now I'm going to take, apply oil paint to the bottom and streak it upwards. I decided to go with a little bit of a brownish gray color for the bottom. And just like the top of the roof, apply it all along the edge. And my same brush, I have to move this a little bit. All right, get my brush damp. And I want to pull up and I want to do it as straight as possible. All the way to the top.
now just go along and work on these edges just a little bit. Okay, so I'll let that dry. Let's see what I have. So I have a single LED that I mounted on this piece of styrene. I also installed a 500 ohm resistor. And I think that's all the lighting that this small building is going to need. And I wrote on here 500 ohm resistor just to make sure I know what I have in the future. I don't have a place in mind for this building right now so if it sits for a while that way I know what uh, what's going on with the LED. Well, I'm getting ready to do a little bit of streaking on the base of the Golden Valley Freight House. Just apply a little bit of oil paint Take my brush, get it damp with some thinner, and run these streaks down the side of the foundation. So I've added the sign to the building. And this is track side. I used some really thinned oil paint and I put a few stains on the sign to try to give it a little bit of aging. I've left the oil paint on the Golden Valley Freight House sit for about six hours. That way I feel like this paint should be set pretty well. I mixed up a little bit of dusty brown that I'm going to apply beneath the roof supports. And then I'll streak that. Well, that's the end of this project. Hope you found the construction and weathering useful. And I want to thank you for watching.